Hello, we're going to take a look at static electricity today, and this is electricity linked to insulating materials. So we can give an example of a plastic rod and a cloth. And if you have a certain type of plastic rod and a certain type of cloth, you can actually, if you take a closer look, you can transfer electrons. So initially they are both neutral in terms of their charges, but we have electrons in, for, in this example, we have electrons in the cloth that are transferred to the rod. Now, if we have more electrons in the rod and less in the cloth, that means we're going to have a positive charge in the cloth and a negative charge in the rod, because remember, electrons are negatively charged. Both of those charges will be equal in size, but they will be opposite. Now, if we charge another rod in the same way and bring it close to the original rod, you'll see that both of those have the same charge and they will push each other away. In other words, they will repel because same charges or similar charges repel each other. We could do a similar experiment again, but this time a different type of plastic with a different type of cloth. And in this case, in this example, the electrons actually go the other way. So they go from the rod to the cloth. Now you don't need to know the kinds of material that transfer electrons and which way they transfer electrons. You just need to know that electrons are transferred when certain objects rub together and a charge is made on the two objects. So in this case the rod is positive and the cloth is negative. So again if we brought two rods with a similar charge, in this case a plus charge, close to each other, again they would repel. So we can take a look at a summary of the different possibilities. So at the top we've got two negatively charged rods or two neg negatively charged objects and as you can see they repel. Two positively charged objects will repel as well but if the objects have opposite charges they will attract as shown by diagram number three or the third one and the fourth one. Okay so this is all the possibilities for attraction and repulsion depending on static electricity or electrical charge. Here we have what's called a Van de Graaff generator. There is a belt where the arrow is as you can see and that belt spins and as it spins it transfers electrons to that metal dome at the top. And over a period of time, over a period of short time, we get a massive buildup of electrons, or in other words, a massive buildup of negative charge in the dome. So we can show that as a big negative sign. Now, if you bring another object nearby, another metal object nearby, what happens is the dome discharges by an electrical spark or through an electrical spark because there's such a large charge built up in the dome. Okay, so this is just um, an idea of how static electricity works in terms of repulsion and attraction and sparking. What we can look at next is just a few examples where you might see static electricity in action. Okay, so we have some examples here. And these, these are where you might see static electricity either being used or actually, in fact, in one of them it's a bit of a danger. But um, it's examples of uses and situations where we see static electricity. Now, the first one is something that's very useful. This is a body of a car being sprayed. So the spray paint actually is given a charge and the body of the car is given a charge. So, for example, we could have the car body with the opposite charge of the spray paint. We could say, for example, the car body has a positive charge. So that means electrons have been transferred away from it, whereas the sp spray paint has been given a negative charge. And because of this, we have the paint being attracted to the car body, and that means we're going to get an even coat and less wastage of paint when we spray paint the car, because the paint will be attracted to the car. Another example where static is, is, is relevant is in terms of sparking or causing sparks, and this is refueling aircraft. So what we have is the nozzle of the fuel pipe that's supplying the plane. Now this could become electrically charged because of the fuel rubbing against the, um, the fuel pipes and that could cause a spark when it touches the body of the plane. But what we do is we make sure that the aeroplane and the fuel truck are both earthed. In other words, they are both connected to earth so that charge cannot build up. The electric charge actually flows away to earth from both the plane and from the fueling tank or the fueling truck. So we get no static buildup and no spark. Okay, and the last one is something you may have seen in class. This is called a Van de Graaff generator, which we looked at in a previous one of the slides. And you may have had a go at this, where you touch the dome of the Van de Graaff and your hair actually then stands up. Now, the reason why 
here kind of stands up is because it gains a negative charge because electrons are transferred to you and to your hair. The hair will repel, all the hairs repel each other because they're trying hard to repel each other and get away from each other. They actually end up standing up on your head and it's quite a fun thing to see if, you, if you've had a go at this. To make the hair lie down again, you have to actually make sure you earth yourself um, on something that is connected to earth so the charge leaks away from your body. Okay, so this is static electricity and a couple of examples where you might see uh, it where it is relevant, either it's useful or it's a danger, or in fact, in one case, it's just a bit of fun. But other than that, for this video today, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.